You work, you earn money, you pay taxes, and those taxes go to pay interest on money that was created from nothing. Step five, the bank's profit. The Federal Reserve is owned by private banks. Member banks are required to buy stock in the Fed. They receive a 6% annual dividend on that stock paid from the Fed's profits. And the Fed's profits come from the interest on government bonds, interest paid by taxpayers. So here's what really happens. The Federal Reserve creates money from nothing, loans it to the government, the government spends it into the economy, you pay taxes to cover the interest, and the banks that own the Fed collect that interest as profit. You're working to pay interest on money that was created from nothing by private banks. This is the system the seven men at Jekyll Island created. The Jekyll Island meeting ended in late November 1910. The bankers had their legislation. Now they needed to get it through Congress. This took three years of careful political maneuvering. First, they couldn't present it as the banker's plan. Senator Aldrich introduced it as the Aldrich plan in 1912, but it went nowhere. Everyone knew Aldrich was a banker ally. Democrats, who controlled the House, rejected it immediately. The bankers needed a new strategy. In 1912, Woodrow Wilson won the presidency. Wilson was a Democrat who had campaigned against the money trust and Wall Street power. He seemed like the last person who would support a banker's central bank. But Wilson had a problem. His campaign was bankrupt. He needed funding. Enter the bankers. Paul Warburg and other Jekyll Island conspirators supported Wilson's campaign through intermediaries. They gave him money, they gave him advice, and they gave him a chief advisor, Colonel Edward House, who was deeply connected to banking interests. After Wilson won, House became his most trusted advisor, and House pushed hard for the Fed. 